Hi, I'm Rob Cosm. Welcome to my shop. I've been looking for a bedrock four and a half. Recently found one, not in very good shape, but we're going to fix it and I'm going to walk you through the process. Stay with us. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. Um, this is the only four and a half that I've been able to locate. It's in terrible condition, but I think we can restore it. But I also want to explain to you a little more about the bedrock, what made them unique, but also what my plan is. So if you look over here, we, uh, we have a classroom where we teach uh, traditional hand tool woodworking classes, primarily to combat wounded veterans. And w one of the wall displays, and some of you may uh, cringe when you hear this, but one of the wall displays we want to have is a series of hand planes. And I have a number one, which wasn't a bedrock, right up through to the number eight. I'm missing a couple. Um, these are, so this is not going to be restored to working condition, although it could be, but mostly just for appearance sake. And the bedrocks, as I mentioned, they didn't do a number one, but they did a number two, they did a number three, they did a number four. Four and a half is what we're working on. They did a five, a five and a quarter, that's one I'm missing, a five and a half. I must admit also that the five and a half never had a two and three eighths inch wide blade. So it's a two and a quarter, much rarer. A six, a seven, and an eight. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to take each of these pieces apart, make sure they're salvageable. You'll notice there's no rear tote and there's no rear knob and there's very little left of the rear tote. But that's why I'm going to sacrifice another four and a half and I think the pieces will be interchangeable. So that is, uh, is in pretty rough shape, but it's the piece that has the bedrock name on it. So we don't want to replace that, but you can see that most likely, in fact, it's almost always what's happened, is it has been used as a screwdriver over the years, and you can see how pieces have been broken off. So probably a good reason not to use it as a screwdriver. Now I'm going to see. I'm going to separate the uh, the. Oh my, wow, that's that might not come across parts quite so easy. I thought it would, but. Hopefully all this stuff can be restored. Now, uh, I guess we'll just have to take that piece. Well, actually that's gonna have to be removed. The uh, screw is broken off. The knob comes down over that boss and then the screw goes down through the top. But we're gonna have to get that out. Um, see if we can get the back one off. This is what's called the toe screw. See if I can't clean out. I haven't done anything to this since I picked it up, as you can tell. You know, that one's broken off as well. So it's going to take some work to get those out. Now these, these ones were made out of Brazilian rosewood, so I'm actually going to save that little piece. And the one that I have, the replacement one I'm going to put on is Brazilian rosewood as well. And that is no longer used. Now that adjuster knob, and I don't know why they ever made them so small because there was no leverage and they were so hard to turn under the pressure of the lever cap. Okay, now we'll take these and these frog retaining screws that I'm trying to get out have points on the end and those points engage those cone-shaped holes. Now. That should just come apart. See if we can get these pins out. Even though I don't plan on using this, I would still like to keep it in the original condition if at all possible. Okay, there's your yoke. Just want to remember which way that goes in. And I really don't want to grab a hold of that with a pair of pliers and score it, so I'll see if I can't tap it all the way through. There's 
the pen. should be able to bring this back and it'll just come with that piece of steel. There's a little slot on this screw. These aren't, yeah, that just fits over there and obviously when that's fastened to the back of the frog as you move this in and out it pulls it with it. And we can take this one out. This is the one that the lever cap applies pressure against. So there's only one, two, three pieces left that we need to take apart. Now we're going to get this apart. See if I can wedge screwdriver down in there. It's just sitting on there, but those two surfaces have had enough rust over the years that they've welded them together. Let's see if I can tap that. Here it is, coming apart. I'm being really careful not to hit this so hard that we break that casting. There's one more piece we could take apart, but I'm not going to bother because it involves having to grind that. I think I'm just going to leave that. This is actually free. It doesn't move. So this was another feature that was nice about the bedrocks. That actually had a bearing on there that would spin. So when that was placed in that long slot of the blade and you would use it like so in order to align the blade with the sole of the plane. So you want your blade to project parallel to the sole and you would use this lateral adjustment lever to do that. I actually had that in wrong. It's, the bevel's always on the downside. Okay. Well, the stuff we're going to use is called crud cutter. It's actually a water-based but it says that you need to remove all of the free dirt and oil first. And we're going to use some warm soapy water and a, and a brush. And all see right, if I'm we just can. using some warm soapy water with a uh, nylon bristled scrub brush. I can't say I frequently do this with my hand planes. So the uh, crud cutter says you need to remove any grease grime, any loose scale. I suspect what you're looking at right there is pitch from something like pine that might have to soak. I really want to just find the markings on this. it's been painted. That wouldn't be original. Now I'm going to go through and do this with all of these pieces so give me a bit of time to do that. Okay so I, I actually had to use paint uh, stripper to get rid of some of the paint that was on there and now I've got it sitting in a tub of crud cutter. You can see it works pretty quick. It's only been in there four or five minutes and it's already taken the rust off. But I've got to put some rocks in here and raise the level if I can. Because I don't have enough cred cutter to go over the top. It wasn't quite enough. I wanted to get to the top of the shoulders. Now I'm going to leave this in here for a couple of hours anyway and hopefully that will do the trick. It's already doing a pretty good job. Ok, 
Okay, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put some uh, gravel or something in there just to raise that level up so we can get this stuff completely covered and I don't have to do it twice. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our newsletter has subscriber-only content, monthly discount on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. So this was about three hours sitting in a in a tub full of crud cutter, and it did a really good job in terms of getting all that uh, rust off. That's pretty clean. I can do more, but remember, I want this to look like the rest of them. So there's your there's your number six oh four. It's nice and clear in the bedrock and the patent date. And I'm pretty sure that that is actually a day, not a year. So that would have been, although it would have been 1910 as well. So if it is, it's April 19, 1910, because that one was April 2nd, 1895. Anyway, that's that looks pretty clean. I'm going to put a little bit of oil, just a, just a film on there. I... I thought about painting the inside, but again, I want it to look like everything else. So I don't think I'm going to do anything to that. I'll put a little bit of oil on the lever cap as well. That came out. There's still a little bit of this that I may have to scrape some stuff off of, but that came out pretty clean as well. Didn't do anything for the brass. The chip breaker and the blade. I may go in and just use a, a hand block on that a little bit just to... It does a pretty good job of bringing that back to metallic color. It doesn't take long. That looks a little bit better than that black. So I'll go through and I'll do both sides of that. And we'll grind a new bevel on there just to make it look good. We'll do the same thing on here. But my next task, before I can do anything with the handles, is I've got to get rid of these, I've got to get these screws out that are broken off. I don't know whether to do that in the drill press or just try it with the handheld. I'm going to use a screw extractor, but you've got to get a pilot hole first. Oh, actually, that's almost, that actually moved. Now this back one, which is on an angle, might be a little harder. Gonna have to kind of guess at the angle in order to get that drilled properly. Same thing to this, I'll come right in on the center. That needs to be held at about that angle. twist that off. I think that's drilled deep enough. I better get some penetrating oil and let that sit and hopefully loosen that up. So wire brush and one of these little pads does a pretty good job of cleaning these up. I need to get these screw threads a little bit cleaner. Try this again. It's had uh, penetrating oil sitting on it for a while. There it is. All right. 
right. Now, as long as those other handles will fit, we should be good to go. I think I'll just get uh, a little bit of oil on a rag and just wipe that all down just to give it a little bit of color. What I'll do is just soak this and then wipe it off, but it'll leave a little bit of a film. threads. Try to straighten that out while we're doing it. Okay, put the chip breaker on. Snug that up. Remember, this is not intended to be used but I want to put it back in usable condition. So I wiped off the oil, the excess oil on the chip breaker, I probably on the lever cap, and it's all broken up, but I'm not gonna do anything because it would make it too short. Now we can put the frog back together. Okay, let's put these pieces back together. Make sure I'm using the right one. This. I find when you put this piece on, it's best to uh, just don't make it tight. Just enough to uh, hold it there. And then once you put the adjuster knob on and it aligns itself, then you can come back and snug it up a little more. Now we're going to put this piece on. You can put this on first if you want, but it'll fit either way our pin in. I'm going to use my brass hammer for that. Oh, went too far. This is a reverse thread, so when you put it on, you're going to turn it the opposite way you'd expect. And then as you get it on there, you've got to engage those ears on the yoke until that falls into place. That moves freely. Now, if I was going to use this, I'd go in and I would actually put that up against a solid piece of metal and I would come in and I'd peen that a little more just to take some of that slop out. But I want to try to leave this in a in original condition, but just have it look a little bit better. Uh, maybe before we put that on, we'll go to work on putting on that uh, handle and tote, or uh, knob and tote. Change that one out for the one we cleaned up. I like to get both of these started before you tighten either one, just in case they don't always align perfectly. That fits well. Oh, we gotta put this frog retaining screws in. What 
to do with the other one right there. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on these. Now we put this in place, we have to make sure that that fits right in that slot on the screw. And when we put these in, we got to make sure that those holes, a little bit of a divot right there that lines up with it so we know you want that pointing straight back so that when you put the screw in, it'll make itself and it make its way into that cone shaped hole. I like to get my thumb on there just so I can feel it right itself as the two connect and you know for sure you've got it in the right spot. Now, compared to what that looked like a little while ago, that'll find its spot on our display. Looks pretty good. If you like my work and enjoy my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos and help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the link below, the chisel and plane icon, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our online and in-person workshops.